<laughs> wow <laughs> that was amazing thanks I've been practicing it because I wanted to make sure that people knew I could sing <laughs> yeah, I know now <laughs> our album's coming out in January <laughs> false prophet <laughs> just kidding okay no, welcome back welcome back <laughs> the fact that you're here means you must be part of our tribe or you should be <laughs> some of you are like I'm not in the mood I'm turning this off right now <laughs> let me be your deliverance yes and we I'm not gonna shake that I know it's like I want to wish you a Merry Christmas this is a little different than our normal <laughs> I'm gonna stop hold on this is a little different than our normal podcast if you're watching a YouTube video um just because we just want to get on and encourage you and just love you because this is a great season for many and this yeah. is a really hard time for many. Yeah. I think next week we'll have to hop on and share prophetically what we see coming, yeah. what we've like directly heard the Lord share and encourage you guys with what we've heard. Um, and this week, yeah, you may be listening on Christmas. You may be listening after, I don't know. It's crazy how much random growth these podcasts have at different times of the year after the release but I think for us like you know I have a lot of friends who are experiencing Christmas for the first time without their one of their parents or family member and so it's like we wanted to hop on here and encourage you how to have a thoughtful Christmas and like not not like in a doomsday negative like scary thing because those who are in Christ Jesus like have nothing to fear and anything not done in faith is sin and I you can't be in faith when you're in fear so I say that because um, I was just thinking, like, how can I make this Christmas special? Like, how can we help encourage you to make this Christmas special, even with family members that are not yet believers? And so we wanted to share some ideas with you because sometimes being around family can be really hard. And can you hear me? Is my Bible right there? I was reading it yeah. this morning. Okay. Um, oh, it's still open. Okay. So I was reading this morning and I love the book of James so much it makes me so happy and I just wanted to read this to you um um my dog is chewing on something dude hold on one second it's okay Remy no 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 <laughs> <laughs> don't help me that's not for you and so then real. someone's phone's going off this is amazing this we is real life I've had there's been no quiet time of day. This has been, we've actually been having our company Christmas party. I mean, our company. <laughs> so no, we actually just went to have lunch and just, we prayed and we did some last minute Christmas yeah. gifts and stocking stuffers and just enjoy the season. And I think the best part of it was just being together. Yeah, it was. We were having a lot of fun. I was like, imagine in the future when we can do company Christmas parties and all that. Okay. <laughs> so this is what I want to share with you. This may sound really random, but I was thinking about this and I was like, man, people are gathering. Let's, let's talk about this. So, um, I'm going to read two paragraphs from James starting in James 19 it says, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. So first of all, many, many families struggle with anger. And when you begin to change in your heart, your family may not always understand why you're responding with listening, not in a passive way. But when you're not responding with anger, when you used to respond with anger, your family may be like, it may make them manifest more. And that's not them. That's definitely a spiritual yeah. thing. But the word is planted in you and it can save you in these moments. And it says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at the face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. I never really liked the scripture because I didn't really like it. I know it sounds weird. And it says, but the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. So I just want to encourage you, like, turn on like five minutes a day, five minutes a day this week. Read the word. I love the book of James. I think it would be great for you to read the gospel because we're celebrating the life and resurrection everything like I don't know how we can celebrate the birth of Jesus and not the whole life of Jesus I've been going through the book of Luke every day I love that 
So we just want to encourage you to get in the word five more minutes a day and just meditate on it because you can't forget what's in here. And the only way to forget is to not remind yourself. It's like not having looked in the mirror forever. You look in the mirror, like you read something and it's powerful, but you're not meditating on it enough to memorize, okay, this is how I respond in the situation. And the more I filled myself with the word, the more loving, kind, and gentle I've become. And that's the word transforming me, not Janie Lynn transforming me. So that's one big thing to love your family more in this season and ask for help. The Holy Spirit was sent to you for help. And so we want to encourage you to ask for help when you're around family before you go in Holy Spirit. Will you, will you please help me love my family? Well, will you give me eyes to see ears to hear and a mind to understand how you love them, how you see them? I want to, I want to love them from that place. And will you give me wisdom and will you give me the ability to respond no matter what with kindness, love with your fruits of the spirit, all of the fruits of the spirit. Can you go meditate on that? Go meditate on that. So that's the first thing I would want to encourage you with in a spiritual regard going into the week. Yeah. And just remember that tensions are always high with family. And I think we're always least impatient with our family, but Satan hates the family. He hates the family dynamic. He hates the way marriage shows a relationship between Christ and the church. And so where does he love to attack when everybody's gathering together and he loves to get in and stir it up and your buttons are going to be pushed. So go and knowing that one, keep your armor on, not because you have to defend yourself against your family, but they're going to, you're going to get poked and prodded or you might. I mean, some families are in perfect harmony. We don't know what that's like. I'm just joking. (laughs) Hey mom. (laughs) Mamas, we love you so, so much. But no, some families don't struggle with that, but the majority of them do. I've never heard of one that doesn't. I'm just giving you the benefit of a doubt. Yeah. But go in knowing that you're going to respond and respond in kindness alone. Yeah. And that you're not going to let them get the best of you. Yeah. Go to the bathroom. Take a five-minute breather and pray. If you feel yourself responding or you feel that anger or frustration or if you feel like the atmosphere in the house, that it's not just you, but you can feel it literally coming over your family, pray over them. Yeah, when the Lord on. has let you feel that, that's your responsibility to take. So you can shift that atmosphere. The Lord's given you that authority. So pray over everybody. If you have believers or if they'll allow you to, even if you don't in your family, stop everybody and just pray. Just yeah. pray blessings, pray joy over the season, pray peace, because that's what the, we are celebrating yeah. our Prince of Peace yeah. who came down. Yeah, and I think, I think his reward is us knowing him and loving him. And when you know him and love him, you can't help but want to know and love the people around you. And so I think some of you too are probably listening to this. Like, I love being around my family. It's an amazing time of year. We love being around our family. (laughs) Yeah, we do. We love our family so much. And so I love family time. I love this Christmas time. Unfortunately, Hallmark has taken a left turn in certain ways. So like my mom's sister and I have to like review the Hallmark movie before we watch it, but we still like watching the ones that we can and spending quality time together. But, um, but there's so much we could say here. We just want to keep it short and encourage you. So I wanted to give some thoughtful ideas on how you can love your family more, give thoughtful gifts or do something thoughtful this year. That's kind of maybe different than normal. Um, because whether somebody's a believer or not, thoughtful yeah. gifts, are beautiful. But that's what the prophetic is actually for. It's yeah. not for the believers. It's for the non-believers so you can reach them. Totally. So for many of you, you may be like, you know, really praying somebody into the kingdom. So one thing you can do is simple as this, write a card yeah. that says, this is what I value. This is what I see in you. And this is what I love about you. Even if your relationship is rocky, you ask the Lord what you see and you, if they're not a believer, You don't have to, you can decree over them and you can still call forth who God's called them to be and say, this is what I love about you. This is what I appreciate about you. If it would be too hard for you to say. Um, And then one of my favorite things to do, this is very important to me, unless somebody sends me like what they want, you know, like what they, yeah, I, it's very important to me for a gift to have like um, meaning most of the time. Sometimes you're just like, oh, I think they'd like this, but I like, I love the intention behind prophetic gifts. What does that mean? go shopping for them and maybe you purchase something and make just maybe it's one to three things and you're like the reason why I got you this like we were joking earlier it's like I'm giving this I see so much joy in your life and so I'm giving you a bluetooth speaker because I believe um that you carry so much joy and this is for you to release more joyful music and dance in your home with so thank you for the joy you bring me and like write a card with the gift that's super simple you're not like 
like call forth the thing that you love about them. But I think making this Christmas, create time. Like, do they like time? Mm. Spend time with them. Go grab love coffee. Like, yes. Totally. I think that's a big deal. Um, and then do you have any, do you have any suggestions? Or yeah, ideas? I have a, there's a few. And so I think we, we do have a lot of people that are spending this first Christmas without somebody they care about, somebody they love just because this year or 2020. And so what we're, I would suggest you do is set something aside for them. Set something aside to remember them to, it's okay to grieve a little bit and it's okay to celebrate their life in that moment. And so if you're able to, everybody grieves in a different way and allow that for yourself. Yeah. You don't have to have it all together for everybody. And yes, you should still find joy in the season. And the Lord's going to help you with that. If you will pray into it, the Lord will help bring you joy in this season, even though you're going through this heartbreak. And so, but it is important to also allow yourself to grieve a little bit yeah, and to see what's different, to feel that a little bit and don't stay in that place but pray into it and bring that place to God. He loves it when we bring him the things that are hurting and broken yeah. and deep and dark in us. And we're like, Lord, expose this, yeah. take this over. I can't, I can't handle this anymore. Yeah. He waits for us to hand those things over. And so we bless you, right? This year, we bless you. We hate that you're hurting. And I, I'm heartbroken for you. I don't even know who you are. I'm heartbroken for you, but I just want you to know that it won't, it won't always feel this way. Yeah. And so I think that's so funny because the Lord brought me this scripture this morning and we were talking about like just Christmas, like what we just want to bless them. It says, I've told you these things in John 16, <laughs> I've told you these things so that in me, you may have peace in this world. You have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. So there is going to be pain here. We're, we're going to be faced with pain. We're going to be constantly faced with heartbreak and things that hurt things that are hard, but he says, take heart. Because he's overcome the world. He's won. This isn't the end. This isn't where it stops. And one day we are going to be pain-free. We'll be with the people we love for eternity. Yeah. And so we love you during this time. Yeah. And encourage you to share your testimonies with your family. Like, let them know what God's done. Do not be ashamed with what God, like some of the stories that you may be sharing about your life could impact somebody and you're planting seeds. So we just, we just want you to know, we literally are about to pray for you. And this could be going into the new year. You may be listening to this in the new year and feel like maybe this doesn't apply. But um, also one thing I just think is really cool. And my husband and I are really big on this. Like you do not need to go do something you financially can't handle. Like, yeah. I think one of the things about Christmas is so many pe people put this pressure on having to go buy gifts or whatever it may be. I mean, I remember our first year of marriage. I don't even think that we had drawn names for families and we were buying everybody a gift. And it was just a lot. We could do it, but it was a lot, you know, and then you're like trying to make that years. We couldn't like everything was super small and yeah, if nobody has had hard feelings over that, we yeah. just did what we could and we were honest and yeah. yeah. And you can be creative with your gifts, make something, write a card, do a coupon for like a coffee date or whatever it may be. It doesn't have to be, yeah. um, what, you know, like a, a gift, gift, it could be a gift of time and follow up with them on like the gift of time. Like, Hey, I'd really like to take you for your Christmas gift. I'd love to spend time with you and, and then encourage them, just listen to them, love them, but don't, don't feel pressured to do what you aren't able to do in this season and ask the Holy spirit for creative ideas. And there's a lot of creative gift ideas we could share. We should probably just make cute YouTube videos and stuff that we know, yes. but we just want to pray for you now and your family and, and pray for a blessing. And many of you are believing for family members to come home. And I believe some of you are going to experience that even this year in 2021 and some of you are listening to this in 2022, which is crazy. That's 2022. Um, if you are listening to this already and we're believing for you, I have more faith for three family members to come completely home to the Lord than I did day before yesterday. So yeah. You ready? Yeah. Do you want to add anything? No, I think, I think that's it. We just, we just want to pray for you. We just want to give you encouraging words, tell you we love you. And the joy of the season, a lot of times is set to the side with the world's view. And if you remember, if you can keep your mind off of the earthly things and on the treasures we're storing in heaven, he, that's when we are in peace. 
So keep that in mind. I know this is so hard. It's like when do you have the most materialistic time of year, which is super fun. And I'm I'm not gonna lie, I love presents. Oh, I love giving presents. <laughs> I, love, I do. I love. I like both. Too. I yeah. love shopping with people. I love giving presents, and I love accepting them. I'm yeah. still like a five year old. I want to just wake up. And, I still wake my kids up. For the past ten years, I've woken my kids up almost every year for Christmas, y'all. So. I love it. Um, I know it's crazy, but just keep your eyes focused, not on the earthly things, on the things above yeah. and in heaven. But yeah, let's pray. I think too, it's so cute. I just want to say, I love, I mean, it's easy to plot twist and make it yeah. about gifts. And I know our families are pretty good about the reason for the season as we hear thrown around all the time. But like, he really did come for you. He came for the family member who is in sin. He came for the family member that's still in darkness and mm -hmm. he came for the family member that said they're a Christian and are continuously sinning. He came for the family member that's never met him before. He came for you, no matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've done. And he loves you so much. And as long as you have breath in your lungs and as long as they have breath in their lungs, there's still time. There's still hope for them to turn their hearts completely and fully to him as well as you and me and Candace. Yeah. And so we're doing what we're doing because of that thing alone, that Jesus came because he said, I'm holding a banner over your life that says, I love you, come home. And our church did this amazing thing yesterday. They did this song, come home. And it felt like it was like super production value, cray cray feeling, but it was like this crazy choir. And it would have been easy to like lay back and be like critical or judgmental. I had chills all over my body. I say that in the, in the fact that it's like a big church and it's like, you know, all the Christmas things the presence of God was so thick in there. And I literally just kept getting these waves of tears willowing, like welling up in my eyes because I was like, I have more faith for this person, this person, and this person to come home in my family because Jesus is Lord and he's always welcoming us home. And I want them to see Jesus in me. And it starts with you and it starts with me and it starts with Candace before it starts with anybody else we're believing for. And so I just want to live this way. And sometimes I feel so lonely today still um, on certain areas of life and feel misunderstood and judged and criticized. And, and sometimes I hear things that hurt that I need to grow in and it's good. And I'm so grateful. And I just feel like a hot mess, but I just would rather be a hot mess on the highway of holiness than I would rather be a hot mess on the broad path, bumping up against people with hate and deception and whatever. But yeah. Jesus is always leading us to the narrow path. And I think that's just something I want to encourage you with is your family has the ability to be on the narrow path. It starts with you. So get on the narrow path. And if you're on there, you know, celebrate people before they are and, and ask God to help show you how to keep planting seeds because seed planting is powerful because a season will come when if the seeds are not just planted, but also watered over time, they will grow and you will see the bloom of salvation in their life. And so I just want to encourage you with that. Jesus is Lord. He wins every time. And our dream is to just, you know, prepare this incredible army of heaven on earth to know him and yes. to know that he wins every time and that we don't have to turn to what the world tells us to turn to for victory. And so anyways, just keep being courageous and humble and kind and listen, slow to anger, slow to share your opinion, you know, just ask the Holy Spirit to help reveal those moments where you feel like you need to grow when you're around family. Gossip could be a big one too. Like, how do I respond? So awkward. Your flesh is like, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> they you know? deserve it. Yeah. No, yeah. Or your flesh is just like, I don't want to be the awkward one standing up for somebody and then feeling awkward and them getting mad and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, man, but when you do it with love, like I feel so uncomfortable saying this, but I feel like, you know, this is not honoring them. And I would want to be honored when I wasn't around. And I would, you know, if anybody was talking about you like this, I would stick up for you right now. And so I'm doing this for this person. And I know you care about them and love them and maybe they don't. And so if they don't, they really don't need to be talking about them, but no, it's true. There's things that are coming up, you know, that so many of us face and some of you are just like going to have like celebration.com with your family. And it's that awesome. Really amazing. So. And I would say this too. If you know, you're walking into kind of a hard situation, pray it up mm -hmm. before you walk in, don't walk in and just be like, okay, I'm just going to hold in my temper. I'm going to do this. This doesn't have to be in your control. If you actually give this to the Lord, you pray before you go in there, yeah. have him ready your heart, ready your spirit to where you walk in and you're so hard to wrestle because we have times where we all know we're a little more irritable. And then there's times where we're like, ladies, I once a month, let's be real. <laughs> or you're pregnant, you know, who knows? Oh man. <laughs> I was so... I'm not saying I was irritable. I'm just saying I was really easy to make mad. So. <laughs> when you're pregnant. Yeah.
<laughs> I love that. Or easy to cry either way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. There's so many things. So yeah, just pray it up and just go prepared and ready. And yeah, we okay. love you. Let's pray. You want to start? Yeah. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for letting these women tune in. We ask yeah. that you walk with them when they go into the with their family. Father, we ask that all shame, all guilt is left at the door. Don't let it come anymore. Let them release it. Let them hand it over to you and just be walking in full knowledge of full love. Yeah. Lord, let them be a light for their families. Let their light shine that flow through them. Yeah. Let them be a catalyst for change in the atmosphere and what shifts in their family. Yeah. We've seen it happen over and over where you have one person's heart change and the whole family just has a ripple effect. And Lord, that's what we're asking for. We're asking for a time of celebration and joy. We're asking for absolute unity. Yeah. We're asking that you restore relationships with family, that you create new ones and build stronger bonds. And Father, we just thank you so much for the season. We thank you for your precious son. Yeah. We thank you for the ultimate gift you've given. Yeah. And we thank you for setting an example for the way we're supposed to walk. Yeah. And Lord, just thank you for the courage to stay the course, to obey your word, to love people. Well, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to understand what you're saying. God, I just declare over everyone listening that this is going to be one of the best Christmases they've ever had with their family, that it's going to be filled with such joy and excitement, that there will be surprises of how much laughter filled the room, that there will be healing moments, that there will be refreshment, God, that you're preparing us to just love even more. I just thank you even for the salvations that are coming, the courage to share the gospel and to pray the prayer where, where our family dives all in for you. God, help us. We, we want to be on this path with you and want our family to come alongside us. So we bless you, Jesus. We bless, we bless you as Lord. We bless your life being born onto the earth. Like you would come in flesh to show us what's possible and how to live. And I thank you for your word that has protected me and guided me and corrected me and showed me the way so many times. And so many of us could say the same thing about you and relationship that you came and when you died and rose again, that you would send us your spirit and that your spirit has led us to you time and time again to understand your character and your nature and to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover, to raise the dead, to encourage people, to know things about people we couldn't have known had you not revealed it and to draw us to the heart of the father. God, we want to love our neighbor. We want to love people well. And so we ask for your, um, your, spirit to come and awaken us to the true gospel and the reason why you came and who you really are and the power of your birth on this earth in jesus name amen amen we love you guys we love you we don't hope. forget oh, go ahead yeah go ahead don was just gonna say <laughs> don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment on youtube and share this with your friends and leave a written review on um you know all the things that people say but mainly don't forget to lean into the lord and turn your heart to him because he wants all of you yes and if you have a prayer request send it to set apart women on instagram or you can do our email at set apart women 33 at gmail.com yes yeah. we love you guys love so you. much merry stay christmas. tuned merry christmas and get ready for our 2022 conference yes. get ready we're gonna announce it soon love y'all hello ladies we are so excited that y'all have been listening to us. We love hearing your response. Please continue to do so. Um, we are asking right now that you would please subscribe to YouTube or to podcast if you're listening to us. But if you're on YouTube, please subscribe and share. You never know who this word is for. If it impacted you, you never know who else it's going to touch. So please put that out there. We really just want to share the love of God.